Welcome back to Kachwerke. Um, so, I'm going to do a quick video about setting up Amplitude. I have a previous video which shows how to set up a guitar for recording through um, a DI box and a guitar interface. Um, I've been on some of the Facebook pages um, of people using um, Amplitude and VSTs and stuff and a lot of people complain that they're just not getting a good sound out of it. Um, the first part of getting a good sound out of Amplitude or any VST is to get a good signal, a good DI signal into your door. Um, please look at the previous video on the different ways of setting that up. Um, this video is more about settings and controlling um, the signal once you are got everything set up and also the kind of gain staging to make sure you get a good nice signal recorded. So I'm just going to clap again because it was actually I need another piece of video here. Oops, wait. Sorry about that. So, as it stands, um, you, this is a very simple setup. If you look at the previous video, this, the guitar goes straight into a DI box. The DI box is actually powered by the audio interface. My previous one broke, so I just quickly got um, a Euphoria, the UMC20, 2HD, which is a 202 HD, which is the Behringer one, and honestly, it is brilliant. I can't fault it. In fact, it sounds better than my previous one. Um, anyway, it's got two inputs. Um, the one's running the mic, the other one is running um, from the DI back into the XLR front input. Um, phantom power on, which means the front phantom power is, is, is running the DI box. And it comes in here. So the one here is the guitar input. And so this first set here is the guitar. And as you can see, I put the pad on. This one's quite sensitive. Um, and it's just over 12 o'clock. Now you'll see there's a clip at the signature. Um, this one doesn't really show you the input signal very well, but it does show you when the signal is coming in, as you can see and the clipping goes on obviously if the signal clips. So the first thing that you do is you make sure that, um, let me just show you, so you really bang and also palm mute because that gives a huge boost into the DI make sure that that doesn't clip. And then you also look in your door obviously, see what the levels are like. So the one on the left here is the one that's recording the guitar. So that's actually the output signal of the recording. So what we're looking for is here the input signal. Uh, let me just switch this on again. So as you can see, we're peaking a little bit. We don't want any peaks because we don't want the clean signal to distort at any point. So the input will just set it nicely. Now, if you run amplitude by itself, you see there's two inputs. That's the input that's going into the VST and then the input that supposedly goes into the amp. This input that you see there is the input that goes into the amp. So the input signal is already checked. That's fine. Now we're checking the signal that actually goes into the virtual amp. That looks great. So as you can see, we now have a decent signal coming in and we can do whatever we want to do with our amp um, and further down the line. The other thing that you need to check is if you go to the cabs, go to check where the mics are and also check your room, which room is selected. Is it like a big hall? Is it like a studio? Is it a garage? Is it a booth? 
um, that obviously influences your sound. They've obviously modeled the reverb. Um, so when you get to the next tab, it shows you your inputs. So you've got your different um, microphones. Um, this one on the left is obviously the one on the left speaker. This one is the one on the right speaker. So I can blend these two signals. This one here are the stereo room mics and you can play with the width. I'll give you... It makes it quite a difference. Right, so if I switch them back, I can also change the width. So you can play with these things to kind of get what you like, but actually double tracking rhythms, I would just put it down. You just want the dry signals, you've got more control afterwards. And I've noticed lately, I don't know what it was, I don't know if there was an update or something, but both the room and the DI signal, which is the clean signal here, which really... So you can now hear the DI signal coming through. So if I switch these guys down... You hear the DI and that's obviously not really something you want while recording. So these are just a few little things to check. Um, DI off, I put the rooms down. Uh, unless you're doing something open, you want that open feeling, I would just leave it off um, because you've got more control using a reverb to create that effect. And then the last thing you can see that this signal on the right here is peaking. So you can either turn these inputs down a little bit or just turn the overall input down a bit. So now we've got a nice clean signal. Then you've got a master output down the bottom here. So the overall, now that you know your mics and everything aren't peaking, um, because this is recording the output of the VST directly, this is not the DI that's recording here, this is actually the output of the VST, um, you can now set your level so that that goes nice and full. And you can manage that with this master here. So I can peak it, or I can bring it back to a manageable level. I hope that helps. Thank you very much for watching.